Okay, so today um, we're launching our, our new DIY kits. Um, these kits include exactly what you need to make the project that they were designed to make. Um, all the pieces are prepared. Anything that's not included in the kit, we'll tell you really clearly ahead of time what's not included. Um, and the reason we decided to do this was um, Pinterest tells us all that for $8 we can um, make a dining room table and other such things. Um, but once we get working on most of those projects, we learned that that um, a lot of the tools and things are not included. Um, often paints and things are also not included in the, those pricing. Um, so not everybody has all of the tools um, needed to build uh, those types of projects, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to give it a try. Um, maybe before you invest in the tools, you want to make sure that it's something that you like. Um, I think that there's a, a ton of value in making things yourself. I mean, it feels great to have something um, on display in your home that you made or to give a handmade um, item as a gift. So this particular kit will make a six-piece world map. Um, each tile is about 11 inches square, um, which makes your map when it's hung about two feet by three feet. Um, so a nice size to put on display in your home. Um, we're going to be using Country Chic paint, um, and included in the kit is exactly the right amount of paint to um, make the project, as well as um, the wood tiles, uh, your vinyl stencils for each section of the map, um, a sponge for applying the stenciled paint, um, the hangers to hang your pieces on the wall when you're done. What you will need that's not included in the kit um, is a hammer to put the hangers on the pieces when you're done, um, a little tool for mixing up your stain because we're going to mix, uh, dilute some stain with water. You could use a fork, a spoon, um, whatever you have um, on hand. Um, you might want to use a little exacto knife for picking the stencil off the wood when you're done. Um, if you don't have an exacto knife, a sharp kitchen knife will work. Um, even your fingers will work as well. Uh, you'll need a something to rub your stencil down, so a credit card or a gift card or whatever um, works great. A paintbrush, and if you don't have a paintbrush, you could use a rag um, or a cloth to apply um, the stain. And if you want to add a, a paintbrush on to your kit, um, Country Chic makes a great line of paintbrushes as well. This is not one of theirs. Um, it just happened to be the first one they grabbed. Uh, so, and, and a cup with some water in it for mixing up your stain. Um, I am going to do this project a little bit by the magic of TV because it does require that the stain dries um, for a number of hours before you move on to the stenciling step. Um, so this is what your kit will look like when you get it. Paint, um, there'll be some instructions as well as a link to where to find this video. Um, your sponge, your hangers, your wood, all sanded, cut, ready to go. Um, and your stencil. So that's your kit, your raw kit. Um, I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to start by showing you how to mix the stain um, and how to stain a, a piece of board. I've got an extra piece of board over there. Okay, so we're going to mix up some stain. So I've got some Country Chic paint here in Dark Roast. Um, that is actually the color that I have stained um, these boards here. It actually comes out a really nice grayish brown color. Um, I think it's quite nice looking. Um, and that, that's all that's been applied to these boards is just a diluted um, solution of the Country Chic Dark Roast um, has been brushed on here and wiped off with a wet rag and allowed to dry. And those are the boards that I'm going to stencil on today. So I'm just gonna open my paint. Um, I'm going to mix it about one to eight in terms of paint and water. Um, so you really don't need very much paint at all to mix this up. Um, always better to add a little bit more, um, a little less water than you think you'll need. You can always add more water later, but you can't take it out. So just stir that up. Um, and then I can, um, once I've got it stirred really well, I'm just going to use my brush and test that out on my piece of wood here. So brushing that on. There we go. So I might actually want that a little darker, so I might add a little bit more paint to my mix there and, and darken that up a little. All right. 
So I'm just going to pause that. I'm going to stir, um, stir up that paint and reapply the stain again. All right, so there, with a little bit of extra paint added to that mix, um, that came out really, really nicely. So as you can see, there's plenty there um, to do the remaining pieces of my map. Um, I might, at the end, just take a, a cloth and wipe it a little bit um, just to clean up any drips um, that you might have. Uh, other than that, that's done. You're going to set it aside um, and wait for them to dry. And I give them a, an hour or two to dry before moving on to the next step. All right, so I'm going to move that out of my way, and I'm going to start with one of these. Now, um, when I'm working with my with my map tiles, I can just I might want to pay attention to the direction that the grain is going of the wood. So this grain's going up and down. So I'm I might decide that I'm going to have a mixture of some tiles with the grain running up and down, some tiles with it running horizontally. Maybe I've decided I want it all to run the same way. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind when you're working away here. Um, I'm going to grab a piece of my map stencil. They are cut to fit your tiles. Um, when, when we're applying them, we're going to make sure that, so some of them, um, there's two sides that really don't matter. This side and this side don't have any, um, any part of the map on them, so we don't have to worry too much about lining them up. We want to make sure that we line up this side and this side so that the edge of the, the continents is right up against the edge of the wood. All right, so that's, uh, that's there. Don't have to worry about lining it up just yet because um, I have a couple of steps in between. Um, I'm going to apply, make sure my transfer tape is stuck down to my vinyl really well by rubbing with my card here. So I'm going to rub the whole thing down. Once I've gotten it rubbed down, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to peel off the very back layer. So the vinyl, and don't worry about the color of the vinyl on these. Um, the color could be anything. It's irrelevant because we're going to rip all of that off at the end. Um, but I'm peeling off the very, very last layer. It has a, wet, a wax papery feel to it. Um, but I'm just going to peel that up. If for some reason as I'm peeling I get this, my transfer tape hasn't quite caught that piece of vinyl, I'm just going to push that back down um, and try again. Um, I might have to rub again with my credit card if I'm having a lot of trouble with that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of that piece of backing paper. Okay, so there's my, um, my piece of uh, vinyl with the backing paper removed. It's sticky now on this side. Um, when I go to place it, I'm going to be a little bit careful about how I place it. There is some play, so until I rub it down, um, as long as I, as I sort of just lightly brush it against the wood, it's going to be fine to, to move around. Um, and like I said, we're lining up those two edges with the cut pieces of the continents on them um, to make sure that, that, uh, that we get that design looking really nice um, when we apply it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to position that how I want it. Um, and actually, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so once I'm happy with it, then I'm going to take my credit card and I'm going to rub it. Um, once you do this, it's very, very hard to remove it again. Um, if you do run into any sort of trouble, you can, um, you can get in touch with us. We're happy to help you out um, to let you know if you can save it or um, to get you a replacement piece of map if you need it. Okay, so I'm going to rub that. Um, then I can remove my transfer tape off of here. So look at that. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, so if I happen to have pieces of yellow vinyl staying stuck to my tape, which this one's coming off perfect, so no problems there, but that's not always the case. Um, then I would just rub it again and push those pieces down. Let me see if I can coax one to come up. Yeah, so see how it's kind of lifting up right there? I'm just going to push that back down again. Um, the most important thing, if you end up with a little wrinkle somewhere, as long as it's not around one of your edges, you're probably fine. Um, there we go. Pull that. Oh, follow that. Oopsie, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to rub that back down again and try it again. There we go. No problem. 
and there it is that's it that's uh, how we want it to look just like that okay um, and I'm going so I've used dark roast for my background color here I'm going to use um, some vanilla frosting I think for my um, my uh, continents here I debated whether I would use dark roast on top again um, and I actually may go ahead and do that I I don't know I'm not uh, I'm not sure I'll, I'll have to do, make a really really quick decision here okay so um, I've decided on the vanilla frosting for this one um, so I've opened my little can of vanilla frosting I've got my little sponge um, I'm just gonna dip it lightly in the paint um, and then dab it onto the map until I get the coverage that I want. Um, and I'm just going to keep going over that until the whole thing is covered um, in a way that I want. I do usually recommend that once this is done that you peel the vinyl immediately. Um, Country Chic has never given me a, uh, any problems um, when I've peeled it dry, but some paints uh, the paint will form like a film over top, and when you peel up the vinyl, um, it rips up the paint with it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. I'll show you removing the vinyl, um, and then you're just going to repeat those steps for the next five pieces of the map. Okay, so it's all um, been painted over. I'm just going to pull um, the vinyl up, leaving um, my map design behind. There we go. All right, this is where sometimes that little exacto knife or a sharp pointed um, kitchen knife even will come in handy just to remove um, some of these little bits. You can do them with your fingers as well. Um, and like I said, I, I find I've had a lot of success pulling this up wet. Um, just being careful not to touch the other pieces of your wood um, if you have a little bit of paint on your fingers. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other five pieces of that map. Um, but that's, uh, that's basically the process. You're going to repeat it for all five pieces. Um, and uh, then you'll flip your pieces of your map over. Um, you have those little claw tooth hangers included in the kit. You're going to just hammer them into the center um, at the top of the back of each piece. So in this kind of area. Um, and then you're gonna you can hang them on a nail or a screw in your wall, um, spaced out however you would like. Uh, this kit will retail for sixty-five dollars, um, including uh, the supplies mentioned at the beginning. Um, the six-piece map like this retails finished for seventy-five. Um, so again, you get to make it yourself, get that experience um, of having something in your home or um, giving something as a gift that you've made um, yourself. Uh, and you have all the supplies you need included in this kit. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Take care. Um, and again, uh, as I mentioned in the other video, um, paint is Country Chic Paint can be found at countrychicpaint.ca um, or here in London at Prim and Popper Makers Market in Hyde Park. If you want to see the real thing, um, the kits can be ordered from us. Um, or available at uh, for pickup at Prim and Popper um, as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. 